how to create a melodic techno anthem. That is going to be today's video. Are you ready for that? Let's go do it right now. Hey, what's up? I'm in a little kitchen and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now, if this is your first time here, do not hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you'll not miss out on anything. Stick around till the end of this video, I'll tell you all about the Mixer project. Now, anthems. Sometimes you would like to make a track that has a lasting impact. What does that mean? You want to make a track that, pe that turns people's heads. We're not talking about commercialized hits, we're talking about something that stands out, something that sticks out, right? Any good tune is almost like an anthem or has that anthemic feel you know i mean if you listen to faithless you know insomnia obviously that is an anthem you know um if you listen to fly at six fourth what is it uh tiesto's tune that is an anthem um quadrophonia back in the days that was an anthem something that sticks out something that makes up the, the track but what is it really uh, i wanted to get into that today because um I know what an anthem feels like, but I never ran it down to the point where I felt like, okay, which ingredients do you need? Now, I do believe that creating an anthem is based around a few things that you need to take into consideration. You need a chord scheme or a chord structure. Now, I'm using four chords, not the most complicated chords either. You know, there's no jazz chords, there's no like inverse. I've got one inversion that I do towards the end of an eight bar segment, but that's only to create longevity in order for you to just listen to the track longer, right? So if I've got a four bar structure, it means everything repeats more often, which means you get to a point of uh, satisfaction, saturation sooner. So what I've done is I've done the same thing, but at the end of my bars or bar eight, it's always going to be a major inversion instead of the minor chords that I'm going to show you in a second. Now, on top of that, you split stuff up with an arpeggio. Basically the same stuff you play with the line, with the, with the chords, uh, you play with an arpeggio. Your bass line follows the lowest note of the chords. I'm only going, I'm only going to show you that in a second. And you have to have some sort of a lead, something that lifts the track up completely. Now, if it sounds like mumbo jumbo to you, let's just head to the license and I'll show you on how I do it, right? Okay, let's go do it. When I'm thinking about an anthem, I'm basically thinking of moments when I found myself on the dance floor, hands up high in the air, and just like praying to the Almighty, saying like, oh, is this really, really what I'm feeling right now? It was just overwhelming. Everything felt larger than life. And you can invoke that kind of vibe with um, a certain um, elements in your music. Now, an anthem works best, in my honest opinion, if you have a chord structure that is not too complicated. So if we're just going to go for basic chords that almost any um, pop music uh, track uses, I'm going to go like C minor. I'm going to open up the filter right here because it's coming from the MPC-1, which is run through the Asset Box 3, because this sounds a little bit too digital. Uh, and this way I can just like make it a little bit more analog with the analog filter right here. Thank you Erica Sins for sending me the asset box. Um, they don't sponsor me, but they do send over stuff uh, uh, occasionally and they're absolutely amazing company if you don't know by now. The asset box 3 is an absolutely amazing machine. So I wanted to mention that quick fast. Now I've opened it up completely so you can hear the full transients coming through um, playing the chord. So the chord is this. This is my first chord. Yeah. Then the second chord, I'm going to go up, or I'm going to play a whole chord. I'm going to go up a step again, and then I'm going to go down. So we got, right? That is going to be my anthem -y kind of vibe. Now, I want to milk this for as much as I can, because now that I know what chords I'm going to play, um, I'm going to just like get other things to do the same chords but play maybe an arpeggio and stuff. So we'll get to that in a second. So the chords are, the chords are this. Three and, and, and then there's an inversion that I play towards the end where I play minor to major. And then I go to, so now I have a, a structure that plays over eight bars, five, 
bar six, bar seven, bar eight. Okay? So keep that in mind. The bass line is pretty much going to follow the same thing. Now, if you're looking for a bass line for an anthem like this, obviously when you play a triad chord, triad meaning three notes here, the bass line is the lowest note that you're playing. So watch my thumb, yeah? That's where the bass line is. So, hop over. So I can play the triad chords here and play that bass line here. See, so you get the idea. Obviously, that bass line is not going to get played by my uh, some well, uh, piano of sorts. Hmm. Um, but it's going to get played by the mini tar. So, and then the mini tar is playing 16th because I'm wanna, I want to make this track a little bit more um, 80s like. So I'm going to use 80s type drums, which in my opinion means snare drum louder, a little bit louder than, than usual. So a snare drum on the on the two and the four, um, which is what you're going to hear in a second. And then this is not playing the chords. The chords are being played by the OB6 in a second because I'm going to lay down pads and play. Oh, oh, oh my God, the drama! You know what I mean? And this is going to play an arpeggio. Now let's start building up this track a little bit. Um, what I've got for people that are new to the channel, quick, fast: the uh, Octatrack Mark II is the drum computer in this um, endeavor, which means that on track one is the kick, but the kick is coming out separately, so I can just like play you that arpeggio. So I'm going to open up this uh, one on the DM12 mixer here, and I know that my arpeggio is here, so that's the MPC one uh, going through the asset boxes mentioned, uh, making the whole sound a little bit more analog. Now I'm going to also, because of building tension, uh, lower the filter to 11 o'clock for sake of um, uh, example, so it means that it's not open completely. There's no LFO on it. You see the LFO light blinking, but I'm not using LFO as of yet. As things get a little bit crazy later on the track, I might. You never know, but that depends on how it's going. BPM, um, if you want to know, is 128. And that's how we're going to start things up. So obviously, um, first I'll take the kick out a little bit. Uh, and then I'll start the arpeggio. I'm going to play ch channel 1 and channel 2 on the multi-clock because channel 1 is the MPC1, channel 2 is the octatrack, which means that now you can hear seven, six, seven. Then we go to major here, right? So later on in the night, I'll probably start with this. Tonight I'm playing um, the Kitchen Club in Rotterdam. Probably start with this. I can opt to go with the pads. Coming from the OB6. Now, this is all basic stuff, right? This is just basic anthem routine kind of vibe, right? Anthems, in my opinion, are also a little bit faster. You want to invoke a little bit more of an adrenaline kind of vibe. So that's how we're going to run this today. Kick drum in. Don't hesitate to get out of, the, out of your chair. Start dancing. As you're going to just like get things on the road. I'll open up the stereo as well. There's three outputs coming out of the MPC, uh, out of the Octatrack. The stereo output is where all the drums are coming from and the kick. I've rooted that to um, output C or output D in this case. And nothing's playing because I'm on quick mute mode, but there's nothing's off. So what I'll do, I'll open it up and play. Play around with the hat. Watch this. Now we're going to open up the arpeggio slightly. I'll function arm the rest of my drums and get 
wherever and whenever I introduce um, a sound or I'm doing a transition, in this case I was opening up the, the arpeggios more, then I'm always taking out my kick drum. So in terms of longevity in your track, in your anthem, you would like to introduce the new parts um, in moderation. Okay, kick out. Now we're going to add the bass line in. Bass lines, however, are the foundation of your track. They need to sit, uh, tug, snug within the track, right? Okay. This is the mini tower, by the way. Let's listen to that for a second. Now, this in itself doesn't really do much, but there's a few things that I like about this kind of vibe, because the way I set it up now is that I've got a theme coming from the subsequent, which complements the whole thing. So I let it sink in for myself as well. So I'm there like, okay, cool. As you can hear, there's already a little bit of rezzo on the bass line, on the mini tower here, right? Now I've done that deliberately because if I start to smear stuff out, which means like, think of it as food, there we go. Um, the OB6 is some sort of a buttery kind of creamy kind of vibe. So if I'm opening this up, it will take out transients out of the bass sound, as you can hear. And for an anthem, this bass line is very important because this should run right like this. Trying to invoke a little bit of the new wavy vibe. Let's go into the kick quick fast and put a little bit of uh, reverb on there. Because we're trying to do an 80s kind of vibe, so we're going to go in, make it a little bit more 80s. Okay, there's an effect that we've got right here. There's a drum roll that I've got mapped to scene B in the octave track. So if I open this up, you've got a drum roll. This is what we use later. And on the 1010 black box, I have got uh, impacts of some sort, some sort of a white noise thing that plays whenever I want to make a dramatic impact. So that works like this. Then you play this, you get loud as hell, but you can understand that. Okay, now we've got our little train running. This thing occurs every 16 bars. On track 7 here, it, I've got a crash that occurs every 8 bars, as you can hear. And that builds up. Okay, our patch back in. One, two, three, and. Now I'm going to open up, filter more, put the pads in and work the pads this time. One, two, three, go. And as you can hear, this is a dramatic thing as well. You can build up the track more and more. Snare drum sitting there, kick drum sitting there. Now I'm going to introduce the Subsequent, so I'm going to take out the filter here, take this out. Let's do an extra step before we just dramatically introduce things because we need to make room for it. In an anthem, when I'm performing this live, you know, you have to take stuff out of the way. I think that snare drum can uh, go a bit to the back burner as well, so I'm going to take it out here. Wham. Lowering the filter. Now I've got my drums sitting here. I'm going to take them out as well. I'm going to leave the bass line in. Look at this. And this is what makes us very anthem -y. Hands in the air. I'm loving this. Sounds okay. Now, now slowly going to build up the track again, which means opening up the arpeggio which is still playing but the filter is down to the point that you don't hear it okay.
Ready for the drum roll? Pass back in. Here we go. And then you take the end of the mouth. Yeah, simple as that. So you see how relatively simple it is to just come up with a kind of vibe? Now, once I've introduced everything to the point where I'm like, okay, yeah, cool, track is running, I'm going in the right direction. Now I am going to think like, okay, let's do that thing all over again. We'll take out certain things, we're going to take out the main drums and take out the... But everything is still built around the arpeggio, right? Lowering the arpeggio now, leaving the bass there. This is amazing when you're playing on a big festival and you hear the thumb, uh, the thumb of the kick drum and, and the bass there. Now, now that the arpeggio is gone, let's go for the sub. I've envelope generated it to the point where if I'm lowering the filter, the sound becomes very percussive. Let's also turn down the mini tower. Listen to the sounds where they sit, right? Now, in my opinion, the kick drum, I mean, I'm not worried about any bar fight, so my kick will always be very loud, you know? I would just need you to dance, I need you to feel like, okay, listen, I'm playing right now, pay attention, you know what I mean? I love that. That's the kind of vibe I want to get into. Now, again, since my main output is gone, you can hear that if I'm gonna open up what usually is the drum roll, it now means that there's no reverb happening, there's no drum roll happening, but now you can clearly hear that I've got a cutoff on the kick drum, which also makes room for me to just play around with this. So that's less of a punch in your face, which means I can make a dramatic impact if I open stuff up again. Now what I'm going to do is make a, um, a contra drop. So it's not going to be the initial drop, I'm going to open this up and lay the kick underneath. Check this out. Whoa, people will still scream and think, whoa, what's happening? And still I didn't open up my track completely, you know what I mean? I'm going to do that thing again, but now I've opened up the subsequent and gave myself ample room to now build up the thing again. So, opening this up, opening this up, and now we're going to go in. Drum roll, 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 drum roll. One, two, three. With the pass, open stuff up. Two, three, go back in, you know what I mean? So again. And this is how you create an anthem, you know, something of, of some source. So how did this come to uh, fruition? How does it come to be? Basically, I, start, I started with this, to be honest started with this, we'll start with the chords. Nor usually I start with the drums and I will say, build your track up from the foundation, start with the drums. But for me, I've heard these chords and I thought, I heard in my head, I was like, oh, those are amazing, you know? So let's uh, find cool sounds on the uh, OB6 and work it that way. Once I knew that those were the chords that I wanna run with, that's when I transfer them over to uh, another track and have them play an arpeggio then. So that, that's basically doing the same thing, right? Same chord structure. And then 
Yeah, I just heard a melody. The melody is consisting of the notes that are already being played within the chord line. So within the that's how I just thought like, okay, let's go in. What I can do is uh, go into the sub and you can see the line is being played right here. So but when I played it at first, I didn't play it the way it's playing now. So I've played it and then altered certain notes and uh, at the end of the bar, let's open it up and I'll play it for you. Lower this, lower this. Ta -da! That was a lower note. Ta -da! That was a lower note as well. So, and then this high note here was also lower. So I started to make it a little bit more interesting with climbing up. Again, I'm ending on a higher note because I want this uh, lead line, this anthony line, to give you the feeling that you're constantly being lifted up. Hence, the notes climbing uh, in the scale, but also the higher notes being even higher. So you constantly get that uh, uh, grasping for air kind of um, feeling, which is what I want uh, when you're on the dance floor and the music is hitting you. As I suspect these chords will invoke a lot of emotion, and that's why this works the way it works. And then it's just a revolving loop constantly with uh, my drums doing the same thing. And the bass line and the bass drum. We're going in one, two, three, like. I press you in already. Two. Well, I mean, there's a lot more that I can tell you, but I think that those are the basics. So let me know um, what do you think it is. And um, yeah, if you see this in time, within a few hours, I'll be playing at the Kitchen Club because we're doing this step party tonight in Rotterdam. So um, if you see this, you're more than welcome to join us. Um, yeah, it's going to be cool. It's good. That's a worm, by the way, worm in uh, the Witte de Witstraat. Um, yeah, you're more than welcome to join. And, um, enjoy yeah i want to say hi to moe's to buffalo stray dogs to jay delicious to percussion boy as my new patrons for this week <laughs> it's been a busy week thank you for supporting thank you um there was at some point uh, a meeting that i was going to set up like last night with one of the patrons and I was there online and I couldn't find you and I couldn't get to you to Discord. So uh, if you're watching this, you have to just do something with the connection because I think I must have lost you there. Some reason, I think it's Florian. Florian might have been, might have been you. Uh, I was waiting there last night, I didn't see. It's Florian Heller. So check that out. You still got um, a chat coming. Um, Patreon, yeah. That is exactly where the support platform hails uh, from. Uh, comes by, that's where I meet a lot of patrons. That's where uh, some of you uh, send me uh, these brushes over uh, in order to keep my sins clean. This has been a package that's been in the mail from Canada, I think, for about six months now. Well, I already, I hooked myself up already. But no, thank you nonetheless. Um, Brian, Brian Rogers, he sent me ample stuff, so uh, do check him out. He's a cool, uh, cool producer as well, makes cool stuff. He's one of the patrons and uh, he's Obviously in the chat, heckling somebody, because that's what he does and stuff. Okay, now, um, that mixer project. We're getting to a point where, um, I need to just keep my voice lower. We're getting to a point that I'm getting very enthusiastic now. Um, it's being built, it's being assembled. I will stick something up here. something going so yeah it works 
Now, um, we do congregate on Discord. That's where we chat, that's where we hang out, that's where we talk uh, shop. We talk a lot of stuff, we talk about performance, we talk about everything. I really enjoy the fact that the patrons are there. It's a cool community and it's growing fastly. So if you want to become a patron, you won't be breaking the bank. You, we face with like-minded folks. We talk about, like I said, everything. We talk about casing, we talk about court structure, we talk about gas, obviously, what did some people buy, what did some people did not buy, um, <clears throat> or what they want, wish lists, all kinds of stuff. Now, um, we're wrapping things up towards the end of the year. There's so much stuff that I wanted to do this year that just didn't happen because of time, but I'll promise it's going to get better in the new year as things are growing so fastly. Thanks for supporting. Now, if you made it this far, into the video. You are an absolute superstar. I'm in a location. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your time and I'll catch you next week. You know where. Here on another video. Peace.